Is this thing on? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Summits Podcast. Today we are at the University of Notre Dame, more specifically the Harper Cancer Research Institute. Our first guest is Dr. Sharon Stack. Dr. Stack is the Ann Dunn and Elizabeth Riley Director of the Harper Cancer Research Institute and, <clears throat> excuse me, the Clyderer Pizold Professor of Chemistry and Biochemistry. And in, based on that title, you clearly know I was never in one of those classes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Stack, welcome to the Summits Podcast. Thank you. Why don't you provide a little background on yourself for our guests? Sure. So I've been at Notre Dame 10 years now. Um, this is our 10th anniversary of the Harper Cancer Research Institute. Um, I was recruited here to become the director of this new initiative, and it was an exciting opportunity for me because, um, you know, starting something from scratch that didn't occur in the past. And I'm a, as you mentioned, I'm a biochemist by training, so it gave me the opportunity to really bring basic science into the cancer research realm at Notre Dame and also recruit new faculty and put um, teams together, which we can talk about more in detail in a little bit. Sure. Um, so um, my training, as I mentioned, is in, uh, as a biochemist. This is the first place I've ever worked that hasn't been a medical school. So okay. um, I spent most of my career at Northwestern Med School. Mm -hmm. um, started at Duke, went to Northwestern, and then also University of Missouri in Columbia okay. before coming here. Where was it? where did you go to undergrad? Clemson. At Clemson. Uh, so, yeah, okay. I, I was I okay. raised in South Carolina. So. Are you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So whereabouts did you grow up? Um, Spartanburg. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. born in Pennsylvania, but my family moved south when I was in first grade, so, okay. so I consider South Carolina my home. <laughs> yeah. At what point, um, as you're growing up, did you decide, okay, you know, this is the area I want to go into? Probably when I was in grad school, um, really. I lost my dad to cancer when I was in grad school, and that's going to make uh, me cry, so sorry. It's been a long time. One moment. Sure. No <laughs> no problem. I'm half Irish and half Polish, so I get okay. the sappy gene on both sides. <laughs> and I've decided I can't find it anymore, so I just talk through it. <laughs> so that kind of um, the the kind of research I was doing at the time, and I did nice makeup today too. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of research I was doing at the time could be amenable because biochemistry you can do anything as a biochemist, so okay. um, it could be amenable to multiple different diseases. And I kind of started out working on arthritis types of diseases. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I shifted in, in grad school to kind of looking, thinking more about cancer and, and looking at cancer. And then when I did my postdoc at Duke, I really switched to the, the cancer area. Okay. okay. Interesting. Um, you said you've been here 10 years now. Mm -hmm. What have you seen over the, you know, since, since you got here 10 years ago to today, what, what are the biggest changes, I guess, if you will, or the, the, the biggest progressions you've seen in the Institute overall? Yeah, so it's been really, really interesting to watch the growth in the last 10 years because we just, our, our um, goal here really is we, we realize that cancer is super complicated and you can't solve it like as a biochemist alone or as a clinician alone or a pathologist or whatever. Yeah. And you know that's very different from my training where I hung out with lots of biochemists all the time. And realizing that the more we know about cancer, the more we know how much more complicated it is um, told us that we really need to put <clears throat> all these blooming flowers are <clears throat> giving us both a scratchy throat. Um, it told us we really need to get everybody involved, not just okay. you know, not just one discipline. We we use um, the model of a jelly bean box here. Like if you ever have one of those big boxes oh, yeah. of jelly bellies, and the orange ones are in here, and the green ones are in there, and the purple ones are in there, that could be you know chemistry, engineering, medicine. Each one of them is delicious in and of itself, but you really have to shake up that whole jelly bean box and grab a whole handful if you want to tackle cancer more effectively. Mm -hmm. Everybody has something to give. Every discipline has something to give. So to get back to your actual question, <laughs> it's been, um, I think that's been the most exciting thing is seeing all the disciplines come together and work yeah. in these collaborative teams. and. Each scientist is great, or engineer, or mathematician, or whatever, is great in their own realm. But putting them together, the kind of creative energy and the kind of problems that they can solve has really been exciting to watch. Awesome. How would you describe what the Harbor Cancer Research Institute is to someone who knows nothing about it? Yeah, so the, we're that jelly bean box, basically. So my goal is really to be a matchmaker, just to put those teams together and, and okay. get those scientists talking to each other. 
we don't speak the same language academically. You know, I speak biochemistry, and my colleague Chia might speak engineering, and you know, what's a microfluidic? Well, what's a what's an enzyme? You know, we have to be able to translate to each other, and um, so that's that's what I do a lot is putting those teams together. But really, we focus on three major themes. We're trying to find cancer and find better ways to find it earlier. Um, we're trying to understand how it grows and spreads so that we can ultimately kill it and um, kill it in ways that are easier on the patient. Right. So um, those are kind of our three research thematic areas. Okay, cool. Um, this may be a little bit redundant, but what would you say your vision is for the Harvard Cancer Research Institute? Yeah, so, so we, um, we started out with a bold vision to be a preeminent um, Cancer Research Institute. I frankly think we've achieved that in the first 10 years. Going forward, we want to spread that out a little bit more and um, look at people that maybe don't have the opportunity to have a cancer survival story. Um, for yeah. example, um, uh, underrepresented minority patients that have, um, you know, lack of access to health care is one sure. um, issue. That's not an issue that we can solve, but we can do work trying to understand. Um, how the, the molecular basis of the tumor might be different. So a different drug might be more effective. Mm -hmm. if, if I have a breast cancer and an African-American woman has a breast cancer, it might look the same, but um, if I take a drug, it might work for me and not work for her and vice versa. So we're trying to really understand those molecular disparities. Um, another thing we're trying to put a lot more work into is our, our STEM pipeline and um, educating the next generation of oncology leaders, whether they're going to be in medicine, whether they're going to be in research, policy, um, yeah. education, um, whatever. Um, so we're, we're really trying to up our graduate training, our undergraduate training, and this summer we're moving forward into a high school program as well. Oh, cool. And again, trying to increase the diversity in that STEM pipeline yeah. too, so sure. that everybody has a seat at the table. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Is there a um, current uh, maybe a project or innovation that you guys are working on right now that you're really excited about. Obviously, you talked about a lot of collaborations. So mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a ton of ideas that come up when you guys are meeting. So Definitely. I'd be interested to know if there's something that is really exciting to you right now. Yeah, so I think one example, and I think you'll be talking to Lori Littlepage a little bit later, but one that's one of my favorite examples right now because um, Lori's interested in breast cancer, and she can tell you way more about it than I can, but um, she's one of those jelly bean teams. So she came in and said, I'm interested in the problem of bone metastasis. You know, women survive breast cancer, but they ultimately relapse with painful and life-threatening bone nets. And mm -hmm. it's really hard to study bone in the lab. Lori's trained as a biochemist as well. And if you try to grow a bone in a lab, it'll stay alive for a, a very short while. Um, okay. She started collaborating with um, Glenn Niebuhr, who's a bioengineer who studies osteoporosis. And his whole research mm -hmm. program was, hey, how do I keep bones alive in the lab for a long time oh, so I can study osteoporosis? And as an engineer, he realized that bones are mechanically active for a living, right? You're walking on them, you're pounding on them all day long. So he designed an apparatus. I'm trying not to call it a doohickey because it's <laughs> disrespectful, but he designed an apparatus that you could um, put a bone in, in the lab, in your culture area where the bones yeah. grow, and it gets pounded on. And um, mm. basically, they stay alive for weeks and weeks now when you do that. So. Um, we were able to put Lori and Glenn together and say, hey, why don't you, um, why don't you guys work together? Right. And now she could look at breast cancer growing in bone, and um, the project was very successful, and now they're starting to screen for a drug. What, they, what she found was super interesting, that the cells, when they went in the bone, they went dormant like they do in people, and you know, then ultimately they start growing at some time uh, years later. And um, she found the, one of those dormancy signals that, that allows mm. them to escape and start growing again. So now they're screening for a drug for that. They're starting a startup company to um, hopefully be able to, once they find an effective drug, um, take it into patients. So I think that's a that's really awesome. exciting, yeah. successful jelly bean story. Yes. <laughs> right, absolutely. Yeah. I love yeah. that collaboration. Um, speaking of collaborations, so being an Indiana-based organization and learning more about what all is being done, not just at IU, but also at Purdue and now here at Notre Dame as well. Um, you know, on the surface, or maybe on the, on the, on the athletic fields, they're all competitors, mm -hmm. but cancer doesn't care if you're a Boilermaker, a Hoosier, or an Irish. Right. Um, do you, how do you guys, or do you guys all collaborate on different things and work mm -hmm. together? I mean, your example of uh, the other data meeting down in right. Indianapolis might be a good example of that. Yeah, so we, we do um, work together when we can, and we work with other people nationwide uh, as well, as do the other two cancer centers mm -hmm. as well. We've had multiple programs with, um, with IU and Purdue. Um, 
you know, to try to seed collaborations between them. Um, there's been a few in, in breast cancer specifically that have been successful um, collaborations with IU. Lori also has a collaboration with Purdue, again, on this mechanical bone environment. Okay. So there's lots of opportunities um, for, for collaboration there. And certainly access to the clinical faculty that are there at, at IU is, is a plus for our faculty as well. Sure, yeah. great. Um, so, Dr. Stack, what is your cancer story? Um, so I lost my dad um, to cancer when I was in my 20s. Um, okay. He had lung cancer. He was a very tall man. Sorry. <laughs> Watching him shrink to a skeleton right in front of my eyes was very traumatic for mm -hmm. our whole family. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was very motivating to me personally. Um, since then, you know, I've seen everybody that you talk to has a cancer story. Sure. Mm -hmm. Whether it's somebody in your immediate family or, you know, somebody's child, God forbid, or, um, you know, a relative or a friend. And it's just, you know, we need to put everything we have into, into getting rid of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like your dad's, your experience with your father um, might have been some motivation to get into this field? Definitely. I mean, you know, families suffer um, when they have cancer, and if we can do anything to help that, you know, then that's yeah. that's where we need to work. Sure. I'm sure it's been a like, continual motivator too, right? Like, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And my dad was a Notre Dame grad. I forgot to mention. So oh, okay. I have a picture yeah. in my office of him on, on his storm steps on graduation day that I yeah. look at every day. So was it ever a, a goal to get back to Notre Dame then because of no, that? No, it was. Just kind it, of... There was never something that occurred to me because okay. I was always in the med school environment. And yeah. then you know Notre Dame called me out of the blue to recruit me here, and I said, well, you know, I already have a job. Um, I'm not really interested in looking. And then they convinced me to come out and look at the position. I called my husband that night. I'm like, honey, we have to move. <laughs> so, so, That's amazing. Yeah. Great. Um, is there anything else that you would want uh, the, our viewers to know about, about Harper or what, uh, what's going on here at Notre Dame? Yeah, I think it's really important for people to understand that it's research that cures cancer. It's every new um, detection methodology, every new imaging reagent, mm -hmm. every new drug, um, every new, you know, every new intervention in cancer is comes out of the basic research lab. So it's really, um, you know, while basic research can be hard to understand, and you know, we like to talk like a bunch of sophisticated nerds about it. It's really, it's really everything comes from research, and it's research yeah. that cures cancer. So yeah. I think that's that's the take home message. Yeah, great. Well, we appreciate your time this morning. Um, we're, we're excited about the partnership that we've formed here. Uh, I'm excited about the uh, the things that will happen here in, here in the future and, and how we can probably play a role in that would be great. Yeah, we really appreciate your support. The, the, the more the better. You know, we, we're all in this together and we want to we want to end it. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, much. guys. Thanks for joining us today on this episode of the Summits Podcast. Um, if you happen to be on the Heroes Foundation YouTube channel and you haven't subscribed, shame on you. Please do so. <laughs> Click that button. Hit that notification bell too so you can see when new episodes like this drop. And we'll see you next time. And don't forget, beat cancer.